the agreement now worldwide that it is indeed a disability because apart from the fact that it can affect your day-to-day -day functioning, let's not forget that some people depend on olfaction for their livelihood. For example, a professional perfumer, if I make perfumes for a living and I can no longer smell, I can't work. So I have been thrown out of work. I am, because I have that disability, I have lost my source of livelihood. Other people like chefs and perfumers and the firefighters, a firefighter, for example, can't go in to fight a fire in a house if he can't smell because your sense of olfaction will give him direction that, oh, there's a fire coming from here, it's this way, it's worse here. He can't do that, so he's out of a job. So indeed, it is a disability. Olfactory disorders have recently gained a lot of interest around the world and there's a lot of research into treatment of olfactory problems. For patients who have clear underlying causes, like the local ones we talked about in the nose, once you treat the underlying cause, you are most likely going to treat the olfaction. For example, if a patient has allergy and there's swelling in the nose, preventing odors from reaching the olfactory epithelium, once you treat that allergy with anti-allergy drugs, the swelling reduces, patient can smell. That's pretty straightforward. Or if the patient has nasal polyps, the patient has surgery to remove those polyps, the patient can smell. Now, a more complicated situation arises in patients who there's no clear underlying cause, either those who have idiopathic um, anosmia or those who have had head injury, or those who are post-viral, those who have severe cata and developed um, loss of smell. For those patients, olfactory training has been found to be very helpful. And olfactory training is something we can all do at home. The recommendation is that you have essential oils containing four smells. The original four smells some are not very um, available in our environment. Lemon, eucalyptus, clove, and rose. So you have those oils that have those aromas and morning and evening, you sniff each oil. You wake up in the morning, you pick up the lemon scent, drop it, you take the eucalyptus, and you do that for the four odors, morning and evening, every day, for some months. Some people say two months, some say three, some say six months. And that simple exercise, the called olfactory training has been shown to help to recover function in the olfactory system. However, in our environment, we find that some patients find it difficult to actually do that morning and evening religiously for months. However, once you are able to develop the habit, however, and follow it through, it can actually result in marked improvement in symptoms. Another thing that can be done is nasal irrigation. If there's um, if there's some background inflammation, when you use warm water with a little salt to irrigate the nasal cavity um, twice a day as well, we find that that also results in some improvement in the olfactory function of these patients. Those are some of the things you can do. However, it's important that you work with an ENT head and neck doctors, especially those who have interest in rhinology and smell, to gradually um, work towards make, you know, the drugs, the surgery, if it's required, and then these home care remedies to get the best outcome for yourself.